Good evening, everybody. How are you? Hope you're all well. Good evening to you all in the chat box. I see you in there already. Welcome to the first edition of a new podcast, uh, a collaboration between the same old Arsenal podcast and the Total Screamers. Uh, very, very excited to get this one off the ground. Um, it's been something we've been talking about for a couple of weeks now. Uh, we hope to bring you... Um, a good podcast, a funny podcast, a, a, pod, a podcast full of banter um, and, and silly jokes, I would imagine. Um, so let's hope for a good one. Thanks for coming along and uh, supporting us. Obviously, you know me, um, Mr. Craig from the same old Arsenal, and you know Mr. Dan. How are you, sir? Very good. Cheers, Craig. I'm just happy that we're doing something a little bit different and we can not so just talk about our amazing football club. Not <laughs> Absolutely. That would be nice. Absolutely, yeah. Something we always want to talk about, isn't it? Um, below me are the two boys uh, from Total Screamers. Uh, I met these two boys a couple of weeks ago. Uh, me and Lee went on their podcast and um, I fell in love with them straight away. And Aww. I said, I'm going to try and get, do something with these boys. Um, so, everyone, meet Jake. How are you, sir? All right, mate. How are you? You good? Very good. Very good. Um uh, yeah, I'm all right. I suppose I've just, I've just been actually I've just been on a, a podcast uh, before with Tom Canton on the Guna Talk, so I had a little bit of a vent. So I'm actually all right. Actually, like, <laughs> got it all out your system early. Very peeved myself, I think. <laughs> um, and to Jake's right is Simo. How are you, sir? Very well, mate. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. This is your cast for the total. Uh, all. No, nope, nearly said it. The same old scream, <laughs> <laughs> the same old screamers podcast. Now, obviously, um, a collaboration between the two of us. So, coming up um, on the screen there now is uh, where you can find the lads. Go over and follow their podcast. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, me and Lee have been on it as well. You can listen to that episode. Go over and listen to them. Um, what we'll do is after the show, we will get you a link, um, and the link will direct you over to their podcast. The video will always be available on the same old Arsenal YouTube channel and the audio version of this podcast will be available um, on the Total Screamers uh, podcast channel. Um, like we say, we'll give you a link to that. Um, I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description. It's not there at the moment because I am not. I wasn't too sure what we were going to do, but it's, I'll put a link to it in the description and you can head over there and uh, if you want to listen to it on audio, because we do get a lot of people who like to listen to stuff on audio. Um you can go over and uh, click the lads' profile and click the link on their profile. We'll get it out of the way early. We'll get it out of the way early. Um, <laughs> as you can see, Jake and uh, Simo support Liverpool. Let's get it out of the way early. Go on, boys. Do your worst. <laughs> what happened, well, mate? Well, we can't do much worse <laughs> than you did, to be honest, on the night. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Liverpool weren't very... Um, they weren't exactly like playing free flowing football completely in the, in the first sort of half. Uh, we were really, really passive, and, and Arsenal were doing actually an okay job of keeping us out. Uh, we were we'll trying to cross in from deep and holding, and uh, we should be just sort of like eating them up. And but I think in the second half we moved we moved to that sort of four two four, and Diego Jota, or Diego Jota came on. Um, completely different, completely changed, and, and Arsenal just didn't really have an answer. And I think after the first goal. He's, he's fell apart fairly, fairly quickly. Um, I don't know what your thoughts were on it, boys. I mean... We were shit. We... <laughs> <laughs> That's no wine. No wine for Craig this week. No wine That's for it, yeah. <laughs> and before, before we come on air, I said to the lads, yeah, don't swear, will you? <laughs> oh, four minutes in. <laughs> yeah, four minutes in, I've ruined it already. Um, <laughs> what do I think of it? I Look, lads, we it was effort to see Arsenal was so bad. Arsenal was so bad. And there was a fella come on, we were talking about it on the podcast. I've just been on with Tom and Laguna talking. The fella said, oh, you give give Liverpool a bit of credit. And I was like, no, I won't give Liverpool a bit of credit because they were rubbish and all. You know, like, we we just absolutely gave it to you on a plate. Unbelievable. Honestly, I, we were talking about it last night on the same old Arsenal podcast. It's probably one of the worst performances I've seen from an Arsenal team. And Dan, I said it to you last night, mate. Certainly the worst performance I've seen since the Europa League final, mate. Yeah, it was, man. It was. And, you know, the boys, now Simo said it, man. You, it weren't working out for Liverpool. So what did they do? They brought on Diogo Jota, who I think is probably the signing of the season. I think if he would have stayed fit, I think Liverpool would have been way further up the table. And I think they've got to try and find a way to get him in the side. Like, I would love to see tonight just Liverpool go with all four. Do you know what I mean? Against Ramage and just mm. go for it. Do you I know what I mean? Will, I'd love I think that. they will at some point, Dan. 
I think about yeah, I'd love point, to man. see it, man, because I think he deserves it. But when when I look at what we did, it wasn't working at all for us. We brought on El Nenny. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is the difference. <laughs> we brought on El Nenny, you brought on Jota. Like, who's going to win you the game? And then he waits until we're 2-0 down to bring on Martinelli. Like, what the hell is he doing? So, listen, I've said enough on this podcast on same old about how bad I think the manager is. So, I'm not going to go into that too much. But I think as far as Liverpool season is concerned, probably summed up the first half about how bad Arsenal and Liverpool have been all season. Mm. Both sides were negative. Both sides couldn't really look like it. I would say there was two or three of your players that did shine. I thought Trent Alexander-Arnold Alexander looked great. I thought Fabinho was world-class. In that position, you've has. missed him massively, mate. Massively yeah. missed him in that position. And I, I think, think with uh, yeah. Diogo Jota, yeah, unbelievable signing. And I think that when I looked at Liverpool's transfer window at the start of the season, I thought they, if they don't get a striker, I think they'll struggle. And when you got Jota, I thought that is going to win them the league. Unfortunately, the injuries have depleted you and you've never been able to compete with Manchester City. But as far as I'm concerned in terms of the game, I, I didn't expect to win. I actually mm. went for a draw. And after the first yeah. half, I thought it was going to be a draw. But our tactics just played into your hands. And we crumbled once that first goal went in, man. It was just like, give up now. Awful. It was. It was It was a domino's effect after that After that uh, first goal. And I, and I said to Craig, um, we were talking about this um, match earlier in the week, I thought it probably suits Liverpool not to be at home for this fixture. To be yeah. honest, because our, our, our home form has been pretty woeful. And you mentioned a wee bit about Fabinho there, Dan. And I, and I think Jurgen Klopp was determined to play Fabinho at centre-back in the absence of, of Van Dijk and Gomez. And the same with Jordan Henderson as well. And I maybe think that that wasn't the way to go because since, even though Quebec is probably a little bit better of his feet than, than Nat Phillips, they're, they're both still centre-backs by trade. They are both still centre-backs. And, and Nat Phillips, if, if you paid attention at all to him in the game, he very much just pe- received the ball and... and, and pass it out to someone that's a little bit better than him at the feet. Normally Thiago, Fabinho or Trent Alexander-Arnold. Apart from one point in the game, I don't know if you noticed, he found himself in the wing at the byline, Matt Phillips, <laughs> and put in a proper centre-backs cross. It had no swear. It was going nowhere near anybody. Uh, but other than that, you know, I think Liverpool, f- between that centre-back pair and the pair that's going to start against Real Madrid tonight, is, is probably the way forward, at least till the end of the season, until the likes of Joe Gomez, Van Dijk and, and, Joe, and potentially Joe Matic come back as well. Um, but what about in terms of your back line? Rob Holden just earned himself a new contract. We're talking about just how much Arsenal players um, get paid, and I'm sure, he's, I'm sure he's on a pretty penny. What are your thoughts on Rob Holden coming in on a, on a new deal? <sighs> Well, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, some some people will tell me he's in there because he, he's a better backup than than um, you know. I I don't think David Luiz will be playing next season. Um, I don't think Callum Chambers will be there next season. So perhaps Mikhail Arteta is looking at the long you know the long solution of having him as backup, and perhaps he trusts Rob Holding more than he trusts the rest. Um, that's the only thing. I, that's the only thing I could say about that. <laughs> Do you know why Rob Holding? Craig, why don't they just go out and get a proven centre back like Tarkovsky we, or something? Like because that? we haven't got the money, mate. Tarkovsky simple, s- simple, simple as that. People say, "Yes, you have. You've got the money. You've got the money." Well, we've wasted a lot of money. <clears throat> we've wasted <laughs> since I think, I think Tom was saying there we've spent in the, over the last few seasons we've spent over five hundred and eighty million on transfers. 580 million. Look at look look at our first 11. Do you know, I, I, mean, I was looking at that earlier, right? And I seen, you obviously, you signed Pepe for 70 million. Obama Young's 60 million. Lacazette's nearly 60 million. That that front three on paper is ridiculous. And the fees yeah, you paid for them. And like you say, the only person I think you've signed that's potentially going to prove his money's worth is that Thomas Partey. I think he mm. is going to be a good signing eventually when he gets a decent run in the side. But like you say, you spend money, but you can't say where you spent the money or how that money's been spent wisely. It's, it's, well, it's we can tell you, we, we can tell you where it's gone, but I don't want to upset myself. But it, <laughs> the thing about it is, is that like I was just saying to Dan, before we come on air, we've got Pepe, Lacazette and Aubameyang, right? I would rather watch Saka, Smith Rowe and Martinelli. That will tell you where we are, Dan. I don't know what you feel about that, mate, but that will tell, show you where we are as a fan base. I don't, I'm sick and tired of watching Aubameyang, Lacazette, and Pepe. I want to see, I want to see Saka, Martinelli, and 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 Smith Rowe up top for Arsenal. It's not just about the names and how much they cost. It's about 
young, vibrant, tenacious players that give a damn. And I don't see that front three giving a damn. I certainly didn't see it on Saturday. And I'd go as far to say that I'd go with four. And I'd go with Smith Rowe, Erdegaard, Saka and Martinelli as my front four. I'd love to see that, Craig. I would love it. Because you've got young, vibrant players that can play together, that some have grown up through the ranks together and have been playing for a couple of years now together. I would give that a go. Aubameyang needs dropping. His head's not in it. He's had a terrible season. Lacazette knows he's off in the summer. And Pepe's never settled. So... Why we're trying to keep forcing this into the side, it just isn't going to work. So I would be 100% with you then in the front four. And I think that, you know, what Jake says about Thomas Party, I think he's true. He's not had a great start because how can he in these times and what's mm. going on at our club? And of course, Gabriel, it was absolutely shambolic, I thought, on Saturday, by the way, Gabriel. But he has been fantastic for us and he has given us a little bit of command at the back. Mm. With Rob Holden, I've not been a fan since he was break dancing in front of Jack Greedish back in October. And then he got done by a five foot four Sterling in the box. And then he gets done by a five <laughs> foot seven Jota in the box. Oh, you learn, say. boy. Jesus Christ. Mm. So, nah, not for me, man. Need to get rid of him. Dan, do you think the reason why there is, you, do you generally see a, like, a little bit of desire for those youngsters? Because they're not quite made it yet. And there still is an element of hunger in between. I mean, it must be hard to stay. You're making 300 grand a week, man. It must be hard to be like, oh, do you know what? I need to go out and give it give it 100%. You know, but when you're just starting out, you know, that's that's why youngsters can be utilised so so well, is they still have that. And what, that what, I said, what I said a couple of days ago, I said it to the boys, was that we have unfortunately become, whether we like it or not, a novice club because we've got a novice manager in charge, a novice in Edu, a novice upstairs, a novice owner who doesn't care about football because he's still calling it soccer. So we've got no understanding <laughs> of where we're going with a, with a football club. Sorry for the American people bunch- watching this evening. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to see the branch. Because there are a bunch of novices. So unfortunately, what that's done is it's led down to the players and the people that are performing on the pitch are novices like Saka and Smith Rowe. They're not the Aubameyangs and the Willie Hands, which was a god awful signing. And Pepe, terrible, I mean, absolutely terrible. That never made any sense to me. Why would you give a thirty-three-year-old a three-year deal? He's going to be thirty fucking six. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> oh, I swore. Sorry. Craig. Oh, apologies to Mike Feinberg in the chat. By the way, I love you, Mike. Is he there? With me? He's there, doing his podcast. Watch it, Dan. He says, "Watch it, Dan." <laughs> another, another one, boys. I was, I was when I was watching the game. Liverpool's centre backs, like we've already touched on, you know, the young, in, fairly inexperienced in that sense. And I, I saw the team on paper, and I thought that this could potentially be a problem for Liverpool. That front six on paper for Arsenal was really good. I thought Trent's a bit out of form. Head might have dropped a bit when you know left out. of the England side, Phillips on that side, young, inexperienced, Kabak, young, inexperienced. And I thought Arsenal could really give this a go, but they didn't even get anywhere near the centre backs. No, you know, they were letting them pass it around. Yeah. And, and surely the manager's got to be saying to them, press them young lads and, and get that ball, make them, make them flap, because that would be the first thing I'd have said to them. And I can guarantee if it was the other way around, Jürgen Klopp would have said to the Liverpool players, hammer them centre-backs, hmm. press them and make them make a mistake. And I, I just, I was watching it and I thought, do you not even try it? They're not even, they weren't even trying to try and get that ball back from Liverpool. They won't have an easier game this year. Exactly. So, and, yeah. and like, I, as an Arsenal fan sitting here and you telling to me, you know, you saying that that front six that we've got on paper... And you've got two, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to disrespect now, but you've got two fairly new lads there playing together. Who I don't, I don't, I don't rate that lad you got from Germany. I've seen him play a couple of times, but that's, that doesn't matter what I think of him. He's had the easiest game of his life. Yeah, yeah Play, nothing, playing yeah. against the Bamiyang and Lacazette. Do you know? I mean, two, two, three years ago, people forget that when we bought Bamiyang and Lacazette, they were Europe's top goal scorers. Yeah, I was, I was rubbing my hands together. You know, we had Lacazette coming from France, top scorer in, in front. And we had um, Abamian coming over from Germany, top scorer in Germany. I'm thinking to myself, bloody hell, this Europa League's all right, isn't it? <laughs> you, you, all these players coming over to us, even though we're still in the Europa League, but they just haven't. I'm so disappointed with Abamian, and, and I said it last night, and I'll say it again. I really think we're walking into another Ozil situation with him. Yeah, um, I don't think it will be long before he starts getting dropped, and then all of then all of a sudden he'll start being injured, and he'll have a, a long term little toe injury that will be keeping him out for six months. 
while it's all going on behind the scenes of how 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 the escape plans you know how do they how do they get him out like they did with Ozil without causing too much disruption is he still um, captain as well oh, if, if that's what that's, if that's, yeah that's, if that's what you want to call him yeah. I don't, for me. I don't know how you turn that play to a, to a, a London derby and and keep the armband. I don't yeah, know how that happens. I don't. I don't, I don't see how you turn up to a London derby late and still get named as a sub. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see how you turn up to a North London derby late. Period. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he should have been. He should have been the first one. He should have been the first one in the dressing room. Hundred percent. I mean, could you imagine that fifteen, twenty years ago? I mean, <laughs> imagine I mean, the Vieira, Adams, Tony Adams, Adams. Vieira would have killed you, yeah. <laughs> Even, you know, T- Omri and, and players like that, you, you know, you would have been ostracized. You'd have been out. Wenger would have been out, get out. Like, you wouldn't have allowed that. Well, you've only got to listen. You've only got to listen to the uh, the, sto- the story that Lee Dixon uh, tells about his first North London derby. Um, his first North London derby, he was in the changing rooms getting changed. Um, and he'd, he'd, he'd been put into the team. And he said he was getting changed and everyone was looking at him funny and he, he felt really uncomfortable. Like everyone was sitting down and they were all staring at him and this, that and the other. He says, next thing, four of them come over, picked him up round the scruff of the neck and put him up against the wall and explained to him what today meant and and to, and, and what today meant and what you you're, what you're privileged to be doing here now, playing for Arsenal in the North London derby. This is one game we make sure we win. Mm. Do you know, and that's the mentality I want. I want mm. players. I want players geeing up each other like that. I want players getting hold of each other and head butting each other. If you want, do you know what I mean? To <laughs> to, to to get up for games. To have a fellow turning up in a four hundred and fifty grand supercar late, and you're supposed as to the be captain. the captain. As the captain. Yeah, <laughs> as the captain. Nah, he's not for me. Dan will tell you. I've never been an advocate of Baba Yang having that arm, man. I've never, ever, ever been an advocate of it. Is the, he going to find, the, find a player on the spot, Obama Yang? Because that's what Jordan Henderson would do. That's what Vincent Company would do. They, yeah. They, they yeah. No fault, uh, you're no. late, find on the spot. You know, but he won't on, because yeah. <laughs> you can see by all these Instagram videos and all that business yeah. that they put up on social media, he wants to be liked and he wants to be seen as having fun and he wants it to be fun. I mean, the geezer's getting paid 300 grand a week. Lovely. Go in for an hour a day, get in the bath afterwards. Do you know? Beautiful. What well, that's the kind of lifestyle he wants. Too I don't want to go in his hair, isn't he? It, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> what that haircut's all about. I mean, I'm not going to to get personal with him or anything, but uh, you know, I mean, just shave it off, mate. You're going to do yours it's like that, Craig? Or... Well, I've, <laughs> well, I thought about it, but then I just shaved it off, um, which I think Wise. is what he should. Yeah, I think that's what he should do. To be honest, it's not even like you've got a, a vice captain that will grip. Um, you know, and have a good cop, bad cop dynamic. No. You know what? I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask Simo this actually because my favourite player, everyone knows on here, is Kieran Tierney, right? He's by mm. far my favourite player. He shows the mentality I think is needed, and he's absolutely potential to be world class in that position. So that for me would be my ideal skipper. People say he's too young; he hasn't been there long enough. I don't care. He's coming. He's shouting at players. He's pointing at people where to be. He's screaming at people. If you ever look at the, the fan cams, uh, sorry, player cams, even that he does is absolutely brilliant. The stuff that I'm hearing from this kid. Simo, what do you make of this lad? Because uh, it'll be interesting to know from yourself. He's absolutely superb, but he puts in a Scotland shot, and generally we're sort of playing with a, a back, a back three. And Kieran Tierney is a is a left sided um, centre back in that, but he got <laughs> two or three assists last time out. <laughs> Granted, it was against Faroe Island, still, still a really, really good performance. I mean, him uh, the underlapping and overlapping, working between Andy Robertson and, and Kieran Tierney. Uh, but it was absolutely superb. And Kieran Tierney put him anywhere on the pitch, right back, centre back, left back, he's going to work hard. And I think if you look at Kieran Tierney's body language on the pitch, watch his hand movements. If you're out of position, he's telling you to come closer. If you're not, if he's turned round and you're not moving up the pitch, he's telling you to go away and he's, he's gripping people. Uh, and being a leader, he's the captain and everything, but, you know... Um, I love if, him. If, 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 if he had any sort of sense about him, I think he would just put the car, captain Ampan on Kieran Tierney, reinforce reinforce that uh, sense of authority, um, and and give and give uh, get get himself someone that's going to you know be a lieutenant in the in the dressing room, uh, and marshal people like Kieran Tierney already does on the pitch. I mean, he's constantly just <laughs> telling. It's normally a bamming. He's, he's gripping, and telling him to come come slightly closer so he can actually find a pass uh, instead of mincing it somewhere up in the near the byline. But 
He's a 10-year yeah, captain as well, though, isn't he? You know, he's oh, a captain yeah. you're going to have for 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely um, the man. He's the, Kieran, I, I, I absolutely um, agree with Dan. Kieran Sini is the man. I, I, I'll give the armband to. I've been yeah. I've been shouting for him to have the armband for ages. Dan, I'll tell you that. Um, just be, like like Simo says, you can see him on the pitch. He actually blasted the Bamiyang out of it a couple of weeks ago. I think it was against... Um, who was it against... Uh, I think it was against North Derby, wasn't it? When it no, 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 it was no, it was Olympiacos, wasn't it? Olympiacos. Um, he he gave him a ball down the line and he didn't bother running for it. Oh, and sorry, you I see what you mean. Kieran Tierney <laughs> absolutely <laughs> blasted him out of it. You know, <laughs> too right, so too I, right as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, like I said, he's 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 not big enough. Um, there's no one big enough to be to to not do his job, and especially when he's getting paid three hundred grand a bloody week. <laughs> Ludicrous. <laughs> I seen a, I seen a, uh, maybe a tweet or, or some a quote about it is like the Arsenal look like fed lines in terms of like you know seeing just just no desire. And, I mean it was mixed it was mixed feelings for me seeing Tierney, uh, Kieran Tierney coming off the pitch as a Scotland and a Liverpool mm. fan. I think oh well their their best attacking outlet uh, is is now off the pitch. But <laughs> you know we've got the Euros coming up. Oh, it's not a long term. <laughs> yeah, well, this is it. Yeah, I think he's. I think they said he's he's going to be out for several weeks. I don't think it's as bad as they first feared. But um, mm. it's a massive loss for us. A huge, mm. huge loss for us. Um, so we ain't got any one have we? we? Ain't got any cover. We got to play Cedric there now. Yeah, I know. Or we play, we we sacrifice Saka and and, and bring Saka back into the left back position. I I don't know. I, I don't want to. Back free, don't you? Yeah, I don't. Saka. I don't. I don't want to see that. I I, I don't want to see that um, at all because that that would be just a waste of, of of Saka. Really, I know he's first. I know he's versatile and he can he, he can do that. But no, nah, not for me. I think he'll have to go back to a back three. I think while Tierney's out, um, and that scares me even more. If I'm honest. But anyway, look, you've done us free, Neil. Um, <laughs> there's, there's, there's nothing we can, you know, there's nothing me and Dan can say that we're outdone by. It was great to watch Liverpool actually score three goals without Mohamed Salah having to dive to win a penalty. <laughs> um, so, yeah, fair play to Liverpool. Uh, and, we, and we go on. One thing I wanted to talk about, boys, was uh, the, impact, the impact it's having on football of no, no, no fans in the ground. Um, and the reason I brought it up, I was reading an article today saying that West Ham, we, we, you know, we're all talking about West Ham and and how high they are in the league and this, that and the other. I think with West Ham, is it could actually, for a team like West Ham, having no fans in the ground is actually working very, very well for them. Um, I was getting a bit of an echo there, boys, actually, off someone. Can you hear it? Slightly I can't hear it. I no, can. or you've gone very loud there. Sim. Oh, bye. Uh, someone said, I've seen, seen in the chat, someone said. Oh, that's it. Perfect. That's, that's, <laughs> it. <laughs> that's it. No worries at all. Um, I think um, it's worked quite well for West Ham, having no fans in the ground. And whether mm. I think it's it's hasn't gone very well for, for teams like Liverpool, not yeah. having any fans in the ground. Because, I mean, everyone knows a match day at Anfield is massive. Massive atmosphere, and and obviously players feed off that. But then at West Ham, the atmosphere wasn't so great, um, and especially when they were going through all this thing about you know their their owners and this, and you know it was very negative, a very negative mm. um, atmosphere. Arsenal, I'm not too sure what to say about the players, but it's bloody good job there ain't no fans in that ground um, for Mikel Arteta. Uh, that, that, you know that's the only thing we could say because I think if, if there'd have been fans in the ground. I have a feeling um, he might be gone by now. But Jake, what, what's what's your what's your feeling on on no no fans in the ground at the moment and the impact it has um, on, on a team? For us, I think it's a massive massive impact. Um, Anfield's been a fortress for since Jurgen Klopp took over, um, and then the fans disappear and Anfield turns into a, a, a not fortress. I think the the parallel is there. It's too big to sort of ignore and just say, oh, you can't say that. You know, they, they should be able to play in any environment. But remember, these are players that are used to playing in front of 55,000 people every week. And then to take that away, take that power away, I think it's massive. But like you say, West Ham, I think it's the opposite. Like you say, a lot of like booing, a lot of um, your banners, for the people getting behind the uh, the owners, not happy when Moyes took over. 
you know, things like that. I think it's. I mean, just to, just to come across here, Corey's it. Corey in the chat says, "Why can't it be that West? Um, sorry, where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Why can't it be that West Ham are playing good football? They are playing good football." Yeah, that's what I'm they saying. Are, they are. But yeah, what I'm are. saying is that I think they might be playing good football because they don't feel so much under pressure from having, like you say, the boo boys there. Yeah, and it's not even booing the the players. It's it's you know booing the owners, booing the manager, booing you know other things. And I think that all affects and negatively affects the players. You know, if you're walking off the pitch and you're getting booed. If they're not booing you, you don't know that as a player. If they're booing the owner who's sort of stood there, not really caring, you know, the players don't know that you're walking out on 77 minutes for ticket prices. They, you know, they just see a, you know, 30,000 fans leaving the ground and they're thinking, oh, why the fuck am I here? But swearing, Bolly. But, you know, it's things like that. Whereas I, d- I definitely agree, Liverpool, it's made a huge difference. I can't believe for a second that it doesn't make a difference because, I mean, You've been in a stadium with fifty-five, you know, thousand people, and it feels electric. And you've got a buzz. Imagine being yeah. like a player and feeling that, you know, <laughs> I like that. Like, on you. I like that. <laughs> advantage of no fans are used to. <laughs> Very true, mate. Very true, bad boy. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I think if you look at the overall quality of football this season, you maybe, you maybe have seen that, that certain players or certain teams haven't found the extra gear that they normally would mm. in Liverpool mm. uh, <laughs> in front of their home fans. I mean, uh, statistically, uh, home advantage is, is virtually out the window, as we've seen this season. Yeah. But then, then um, Jed here, you know, Jed, Jed brings up a great point. You know, same for both teams um, on the pitch, having no fans in the ground. So I suppose the home team would be would be the ones who are at a disadvantage. Is there really any advantage to be playing at home this year because of because of having no fans? Yeah, he's brought up what I was going to bring up, actually, is everyone Mm. keeps talking about how tough it's been for Arsenal and how bad it's been for Arteta because of COVID and there's no fans there. There's 20 teams in the same position here, you know, (laughs) so um, I I don't see that as an excuse, if I'm honest with you. I don't like it, um, and it's not just because I go home and away to all the games. It is because I'm watching it on TV and it is boring. It is dead. It's like a friendly Mm. atmosphere. It's awful to watch. In fact, the only two sports I've watched of late that I can't see a difference is Formula One and horse mm. racing because you never really look at it for the for the spa- fans and spectators. Football is really bad. I mean, yeah. really, really bad. And yeah, I remember I when lot... Germany kicked. Oh, I remember when Ge- no, sorry, sir. I remember when Germany kicked off first, and I looked at it and I thought, cancel the season. I don't want that. I do not want that. And of course, I got used to it, and you get into the games, and the passion takes over, but I can't wait to, one, get back in the ground and see fans of other clubs back in the stadium, because it has mm. been poor, Craig. It really has. Yeah. Been. I mean, even Kenny Dalglish said today in a report, I read that football's becoming, like, it's becoming less watchable, because it's, just, yeah. it's rubbish. There's there's no... Like, for example, I, I love watching the old firm, Derby. I'm mm. uh, I love watching it because I'm a complete neutral when it comes to that. I have no no affinity to Celtic or any affinity to Rangers. So I like to watch that derby and I like to watch a lot of derbies as a neutral. But I watched it the other day at Celtic nothing, Park with nothing. no fans in the ground. And I think it like I think I lasted about twenty minutes and I turned it off. Awful. It's just awful. And- you could, when you're watching an old firm derby at Celtic Park or at Ibrox. The noise that comes out of that telly, I can't imagine what it must be like being there. Mm. But the noise that comes out of that telly and the passion and the desire from the fans is is amazing to see. And I think that's one of the reasons why I like to watch that particular derby because they're, they're so passionate, those two sets of fans. I know there's political reasons and this, that and the other. But at the end of the day, they're all in there to watch a football match. Um, so, yeah, I think that what Kenny Dalglish is saying um, Dan is even he's you know even he's struggling to watch football because because mm. of because of how boring it's getting. But you know what it is though, Craig. It's not just the fact there's no fans there; it's that you can't even celebrate a goal now anyway because you don't know if VAR is yeah. going to rule it off. So it's like we can't, yeah, it's very true. It's just ruining the game, and like it's, it's already hard as it is without fans being there. Wow, it is tough. And listen, I've been in the ground. I'm sure you three have as well. When your goal goes in, and you think, oh, let's not celebrate too easy, boys. You can't celebrate a goal, which is the reason you go to the game. I yeah. can't stand it. I hate yeah. it. It needs to be changed, man. But that's another argument. That's another whole debate. <laughs> that's a that's a whole uh, hour on its own, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Really just... <laughs> we've, we've had podcasts where we're supposed to be talking about the Premier League and we just went to VAR for like 15 yeah. minutes. Oh, <laughs> God, we're going to, going to cut this. 
<laughs> but, but it, it's, back... it's hideous and it's nowhere near good enough, in my opinion. I go back to the, the fans. I, I think back to the semi-final, Liverpool-Barcelona. If there's no fans in that ground, Liverpool don't overturn that game. Yeah, it's just good, good. As that. Great example. Liverpool Great example. do, you know, the noise from the second to third goal is an, an atmosphere I've, I don't think I've ever heard before. Um, and then if there's no fans in that ground, Liverpool don't overturn that 3 0 advantage. It's not 4 0, they don't go through to the final. No, no chance. You know, everyone says atmospheres are a myth. I am a massive factor of fans oh. make the football and. You know, if you're a player and you've got sixty thousand people shouting at you, and you're on the opposition of that, it must be a, a you know a, an atmosphere. You think, ah, do you know, what? I don't really want to be here anymore. I've got <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. I mean, like you know, you want you want your home atmosphere, not ju- not just to g on the home fans. Uh, sorry, not to just g on the home players, but you also want it to be. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? You want it to be. Uh, Give me 15 minutes and I'll get the word. Um, off-putting? <laughs> yeah, off-putting. Or th- that's not the word I was looking, but yeah, off-putting. Um, you want it to be off-putting for the away team as well. You know, you want it to be a cauldron, you know, a cauldron of hate, if you like. Um, Pretty much, yeah. But, you know, every, when everyone comes to the Emirates, it's just you know, it's like playing Sunday League because no one says anything. <laughs> or We're another team, really, that hasn't that probably hasn't um, had any disadvantage or advantage of having any fans in the ground, except for the small few. Um, who make a little bit of an effort, but the Emery Stadium for me, God, what a load of rubbish. Um, big empty concrete bowl, hate it. Um, it's just no atmosphere in there whatsoever. Hostile, there it is, Yarrow. Thank you very much. Indeed. <laughs> 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 That's, the That's the word I was looking for. Threatening's another good one, actually. Yeah, yeah threatening's yeah. a good one. Intimidating, that's another good one. But that's the word there. Thank you very much, sir. Hostile. <laughs> um, but hoping that the fans, hoping that the Emirates would be hostile. <laughs> Yeah, all right, Craig. Um, whatever, <laughs> mate. <laughs> Should we talk about uh, Mr. Tuchel? Got beaten at the weekend. Oh, yes, please. Um, yes, please. What a match. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, 5-2 um, against West Brom. A, a, a game I watched. and Do you know what, mate? I think West Brom would have won this game, even if they'd have still had 11. I, I, thought, I thought West Brom were well on top. Um, when when uh, what's his name got sent off? I can't remember his name now. Thiago Silva. Silva when, yeah. when he got sent off, I thought they were well in the game, um, and I think they were good for their result, mate. What's frustrating for me is that I don't like Sam Allardyce, but he just always has a way of doing this. He just always has a way, and if there is going to be a great escape. Um, for West Brom, it's going to need a manager that knows how to do it. And he is a manager that knows how to do it. Now, I don't think they will. I don't think they will. But Fulham and Newcastle both don't look amazing. So if there was any team to be surrounded by them, you would want it to be Fulham and Newcastle. Now, Fulham are showing fight, but West Brom are showing fight massively at the moment. And I saw that game and I turned it over and it was 1-0 to Chelsea. But Thiago Silva had literally just got sent off. And I thought, okay, this would be... A little bit interesting now to see what happens. I wasn't expecting that at all. I was expecting them to be one of these sort of typical Sam Allardyce of, right, let's just keep it calm because Chelsea still got players that can affect us. And it was just like every time they were going forward, it was looking like they were going to score. I was a big fan of what I saw, to be honest with you. Um, And I think what Sam Allardyce has done now is he's got the right players, as he always does, in those positions that are so key. He's got that Diana, is it, up front, who just looks Mm. like a big, strong monster of a player who is just going to beat every defender about. That is what he needs. He needs somebody in midfield with legs, and he's got that with either Gallagher or, of course, Maitland-Niles is on loan from us now. And he knows what he's how how he needs to be organising them at the back. And let's be honest, boys, they have got what one a really, really good goalkeeper. Really good. I think Sam Johnson is a really good goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, don't rule West Brom out just yet. That's all I'll say. But <laughs> hilarious as far as Chelsea are concerned. Yeah, Absolutely hilarious. Well, he, he said, Big Sam said he had to, just a wee while ago, he said he had to win uh, six of his next nine, other the remaining nine games. And he's he's got one on the board. I mean, it's amazing to see the, see the football West Brom are playing in the latter stages of that match. The confidence they were playing. That fourth goal. Tiki Taka. Oh, Tiki yeah. Ta- you know, it's watching Brazil. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. West Barcelona, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, remember, do you remember when Sunderland done it? Sunderland needed to... Gus Poyet was manager of Sunderland, wasn't he? And 
they needed to win something like six out of their last games and uh, to stay up, and they bloody went and done it. Um, you know, so uh, and I think uh, I think they beat Man United in that run as well at Old Trafford, if my mind serves yeah, me correctly. Barini, Barini yeah, squad, one yeah. nil, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, could they do it? Goodness me, Jake, could they do it? I mean, Big Sam is patron saint to the talk screamers because we just find these his shit houses is hilarious. And that's, oh, that's have you about. seen that meme? I think it was it was it they were put was it Swansea. I think he was he, he's standing on the sideline and one of the players Chico goes Flo- over and, yeah. and, yeah. <laughs> and then Chico Flores gets up all giving it all the bigger and then he starts laughing even more. Oh, <laughs> love it, love it. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I've I try to sort of figure out but what went so wrong for Chelsea in that match and I think it was the the deviation from the back line they were used to I mean you've seen a resurgence of Andreas Christensen mm. who's a, a player that's much loved by um, uh, Tuchel but um, he played a wee bit in international football so he wanted to rest him clearly uh, and Thiago Silva took up that central role in the back three that he likes playing uh, and he, although Thiago was good he's, he's reckless in his challenges and rightly so was sent off um, very early on in the game, and uh, West Brom just like I think that I think that goal that it just it just when it becomes one each, you think, Oh, West Brom could go and, and do, do something mm. here, but yeah, you know, they, they played some superb football. If that's what they're capable of, I'm absolutely serious. No reason why they couldn't, you know, put a run together. I do, I think they can stay up. I still think it's a very, very um, outside chance that they actually stay in the Premier League, but. You know, I mean, so many teams are playing so passive without any sort of passion or drive that if you get on top of them like West Brom did Chelsea, you really can pile in and do, you know, five goals in a bounce. Tough ask, Jake. What are you saying? I don't think, I mean, Duncan says here, you know, he thinks he's, Fulham have got a better chance than West Brom. It's a massive yeah, ask for West Brom. Agree. Yeah. I think Fulham, I think Fulham, I think they'll stay up. I think Newcastle are going to go down, personally. I hope Newcastle go down. I've never been a fan of Newcastle. Yeah. <laughs> On our <laughs> podcast, me and Jed had a, had a good battle about this for about 20 minutes and Simo was trying to mediate. But um, no, I, I, I think Newcastle will go down. Uh, I don't think Steve Bruce has got the players. I don't think the players really care. Mike Ashley is probably flopping quite a lot because he knows that he's going to lose a lot of money. Um but I think Fulham have got the drive, they've got the energy, the players want it, Scott Parker wants it. I think for West Brom, it's too little, too late. It's going to be one of those, they could have done it if they'd have started doing it earlier. Um, but I think I do think Fulham have shown a good upturn of form. And the, do you know what? They're generally hard to beat as well, Fulham. Um, they get a lot of draws, which isn't ideal, but it's still getting points on the board. Um, I don't. I think it's too little, too late for West Brom, personally. I think and Dan, what? Yeah, no, sorry, mate. Go, go on, carry on. I, th- I just, I was going to say, I think it's worrying signs how Fulham folded to Aston Villa. They actually, mm. you know, they went ahead. Tyron Mings had a howler, and they should have capitalised on that. Um, Mitrovic got his first start in a long, a long, long time, and it was right learned from from his form in the, in the internationals. Five goals for Serbia mm. in the internationals, and the beauty you know, against he, Ireland as well. Yeah, yeah. and. Um, you know, and I think once they went one 0 up, uh, both teams have. You know, it was said in the in the um, the pre match that they're both one of the worst for coming back from from being the first to go down. And I think Fulham really really should have capitalised on that. But mm. they kind of fell apart near the end. And, and for a side fighting against relegation, that is worrying. Uh, pre that match, I probably was back in Fulham to to be the better side. I mean, I don't know if I can judge Newcastle's match and as a as a single match because Spurs were just. I don't know what happened to Spurs in that match, to be honest. But if you ask me now, I still think I still, still, Spursy. I still think Fulham. Yeah, yeah. Spursy. Spurs, Spursy That's... happened, and a, and an unknown oh, Arsenal player. Yeah, yeah, Joe will it get in? Yeah. It was only it was, he was uh, loving it. Yeah, <laughs> of course he was. Yeah. Like, so, I play so, for Arsenal. Yeah. Nah, so I enjoyed that. Yeah. <laughs> so were we. It was the only the only bit of joy I got all weekend. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but on the flip side of things, you know, bad news for West uh, West Brom. Um, I would probably, I would, I, I'm with Jake. I, I'd back Fulham to stay up. Uh, but on the flip side, Dan, does this dent Chelsea's uh, top four, top five hopes? You know that they, they, they. Does that result make anything different, or do you see Chelsea, you know, securing fourth or fifth um, within the next couple of weeks? I don't think that result makes a difference. I don't think Chelsea yeah. will get top four. I really don't. Oh, yeah? I, even if they would, no, even if they would have won that, I don't think they will. I just think they're. 
Although Tuchel has definitely improved them, and it wasn't hard with Fat Frank, was it? Um, let's be honest. <laughs> I don't think they'll get so far. I think I think these boys will be will be happy with Champions League football. Uh, I think Liverpool will get it, and I think that it will be less than Man United and Man City. I really do. I don't I, listen. Brenda Rogers always bottles it, then he last minute. But I don't yeah, think I he see. will this season. Leicester, I don't Leicester think struggle he will. In the I don't, yeah, I don't think they will, but. I could be wrong, and it could be Chelsea and Liverpool to get it, and and Brenda Rogers wets the bed again like he normally does. But mm. I think that I think that it will probably be Leicester and Liverpool, and Chelsea just miss out. I don't think Chelsea have got a squad that I'm even that envious of, and they've spent about five or six hundred million on it. That like, Timo Werner, mate, what a load of rubbish that geezer is. I, he's I, not. The no, 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 was I, even more. Yeah. He's worse. Now I've, it's now I've said that he's going to score. He'll score hat trick every week now. <laughs> we got um, Chelsea, Craig. Yeah, so you watch. Yeah, he'll score. he against us now. You watch. I totally get what you're saying about Timo. I mean, he has been shocking. Diego Jota has outperformed him in just 13 matches um, in terms of goals scored. But Timo Werner in his season previous to Chelsea scored 35 goals, and you don't do that if you're a bad player. He's missed a lot of easy chances Farmers though. <laughs> I tell you what, me, me and Jacob went to Germany to see. Uh, Dortmund did the Bundesliga and uh, it's bouncing and it's a great atmosphere and it's a, they, they do have a high cheap score as in league as, as well. well. It's cheap as chips as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's cheaper for me to go see Dortmund than it is to go see Liverpool. Yeah, it's bad. Um, it? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I totally get it. It's two different leagues. Um, but he's really still an international player there, and he's, he, they always say to... Judge a foreign in the second season. That's a good point. It is a good yeah. point. Yeah. Fabinho struggled at, at Liverpool when mm. he first got there. Fabinho was, uh, you know, he was, you know, he showed really, really good signs, which is why he kept getting started. But he, he was struggled with the, the the pace of the Premier League, uh, and now for, I, I dare you to name a better CDM in the Premier League than, than yeah, Fabinho yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would watch out for Timo Werner in, in the second season. <laughs> <laughs> no, Billy brings up a good point. I mean, because like you know, he, that is a good point. You should, I think, you should give. Uh, it's very seldom that you see a foreigner come into the league and hit the hit the ground running straight away. And it's always that that second that second uh, season that they they come good. Or of course, if you're an Arsenal fan, you only give them three weeks. Um, and if <laughs> if they're no good after three weeks, then you get rid of them. Isn't that right, Dan? Um, get rid. <laughs> Jake, what are you talking? What are you saying about Timo? Is there any, you know, next year could he could he set the league on fire? I mean, I, I, I watched it, I watched a couple of his goal compilations actually, and like Simo says, he's thirty five goals, and some of them are absolute corkers. Come to the Premier League, and I've always said this about foreign players: it's not always, you know, it's not always rosy in the garden when you come to the Premier League, um, and especially when you sign for a team like Chelsea, he's under a, he's under a lot of pressure to yeah. to bring his goals straight away. Historically, for me, Chelsea. Strikers have struggled since Drogba. I mean, you know, Shevchenko struggled. Torres, when he went there, was dreadful. Um, Werner, Kesman, yeah, Mutu, you know. Crespo, just seen in the chat. (laughs) But (laughs) historically, Chelsea players, strikers have struggled. Um, And I think that the problem with it is they, they throw so much money on a striker. And if it doesn't work, they just get rid of him straight away. Um, But I think... There's a reason that Liverpool didn't sign him. I know Jurgen Klopp wanted him for a while. Well, he was always linked with Liverpool. No, Klopp never came out and said, we we'll want him. There's a reason that Liverpool went and signed Jota instead of Werner. And I think that while he does, he did score a lot of goals, he's a bit like Salah for me. He misses a lot of chances. A lot of chances. And for Chelsea this season... <sighs> Absolute, like some sit, absolute sitters he's missed, and I was, you know, sat there thinking you've got to be scoring that. If he's in Germany, he scores it, and I just, I don't really know. He's getting in the right positions, which that is, is always all you can in ask. the right position. He's that's in the, the right thing. area, yeah, but he just doesn't I mean, score. <laughs> I think, I think Thomas Tuchel used the used the phrase of uh, taking a taking someone out for dinner. Um, yeah, he's like asking the, again. The, yeah, the first yeah. the first time they ask you, they say no. You just keep asking until they say yes, um, and that's what he that's what he's looking at with his striker. He just keeps if he if if he keeps getting himself in that position, then the goals are surely going to come from him because he is class. We all know that. Um, we, we've we've all seen what he's done before, but yeah, if I was a Chelsea fan, I'd still be getting a bit. I'd still be getting a bit worried. I mean, like you know, Nigel brings it up there in the chat when we signed Dennis Burkamp. You know, he, mm. he, he failed to score a goal. 
Um, and we were all thinking, oh, Jesus Christ. Do you know, what, what have we done here? But then he gets his first goal and that's it. The rest is history, you know? What, what yeah. all right in the end, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's, well, yeah, it did. It did. It worked out all right in the end, didn't it? Um, Dan, let's talk about Manchester City, run away, run away with it. Um, the, you know, champions elect. Liverpool, unfortunately. Uh, well, I don't know why I said unfortunately, but uh, Liverpool not not champions anymore because um, it's mathematically put. Well, they are, but you know what I'm trying to say. No, we don't. Um, it's, we don't it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mathematically, they can't do it. A um, bit like Arsenal. Um, hmm. So they're not going to be stopped this season, Dan. That, that, that's 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 the thing. We all know that they're going to they're going to win the league. Um, but next year, Dan. Next year now. Hmm. Liverpool, when they won the league last year, I think I said it. I might have said it on the same old Arsenal podcast. I said I can't see no one knocking Liverpool off the top spot for the next five years. The way they were playing, I used to. I, I still like watching Liverpool, but I always last season I watched probably every Liverpool game. I loved watching them because it was the complete way to play football every week. I loved it. I loved watching them in Europe in in, in the league. They were superb. And uh, like I said, I was thinking, there ain't going to be no one that's going to knock this lot off their perch. And then the next season, <laughs> we see them, you know, we've seen them as low as ninth Liverpool. Um, and and Manchester, United, uh, Manchester City have just taken off and run away with it. I mean, that is big credit to Pep Guardiola, I think, um, about the way he's, he's got his team to bounce back. Has to have a champion Massive. for me. And sports, sport can change pretty quickly, Craig. It can. Sport can change quickly, and we've seen that this season. Christ, this season's been ridiculous in terms of that. But what Man City have got is they've got the player of the season for me in Gondawan. They've got the signing of the season for me in Ruben Diaz, and they've got one of the best young players uh, in Foden. Mm. And they've done all this without a centre forward. <laughs> That's the scariest thing. So Boys, I'm just have you seen praying the, for the life the of me that they don't sign Haaland because if have they seen do, Pep came out and said. Pep said he's come out and said no striker. Pep's come out and said, "Aye, no, I'll be no surprised. We, we don't have the money to spend on a striker." And no, I, was I don't like, know. You're, if lying, I mate. Yeah. you're <laughs> lying. You're lying. You're lying through your teeth there. We can have a bad man. He's playing some serious <laughs> mind games. Serious mind games there. I think that if they sign Ireland, we all need to just give up because that is going to be. Ridiculous. It's going to be awful if I you get him. I cannot stand that, and I'll be amazed if he does because I think that. Teams will wait until I think he's looking now for next summer. I really don't know if he will go this summer in the end because he's going to be 64 million, isn't he? I reckon yeah. Harland will just sort of wait for the money to come in and decide himself. And I'm not sure because of the pandemic that people are going to be offering 120 million this summer. So I think they'll wait until the 64. I might be wrong. Listen, Man City might go, there you go, there's 150, and he comes. And I think he'll, I mean, between him and Mbappe, we're going to see two Ronaldo and Messi, the next to Ronaldo and Messi. Don't think they're going yeah. to be as good. I must add, but I think that they will be right up there. Haaland and Mbappe are going to be class. And just finishing on, on Manchester City, they have got a really good chance of winning all the competitions, but they won't win the Champions League. I promise you that now. They just can't do it. They just, Pep's, Pep's tactics get flawed in Europe. They do. And they did it with Barcelona because I could have won the Champions League with Xavi, Messi and uh, Iniesta. I but, was going to say, you don't really manage them, do you? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just need to turn so, up in a day. <laughs> I wouldn't surprise you if they go out this round against Dortmund. It wouldn't surprise me. It just would not mm. surprise me at all. So, but I think they'll do the domestic travel. I do. Edu to pull Edu a madness. To pull a mad. <laughs> Harland, be excited. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice, well, wouldn't if it? We get, if we get Martin Odegaard, that's his best mate. So we might. That's about as close as we'll get to yeah. Harland. His yeah. best Agent, mate. O- Agent Odegaard. Agent Odegaard. Yeah, come to Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, did you see that? I'll be playing football when we're Ode- Odegaard is playing next season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, imagine it right, was Arsenal. It? Imagine it was Arsenal. I'd be livid. <laughs> be sick oh, as a dog. I, I, if if if, if Harlan signs, if Harlan signs for Arsenal, I'll give up podcasting. There you go. That's, that's how. That's how. That's how. Uh, that's how sure I'm that that won't happen. Um, but Simo, I mean, what's it been like? I mean, what's it been like as a Liverpool fan to to watch your title? Just, I mean, you know, to see your title fall away. I think us. I, I think Andy Riez Jr. put up a better title defence against Anthony Joshua. I think. <laughs> um, you know, was it was it been like as a Liverpool fan to just watch it slip I mean, away like that? Well, well, not slip like, away, just snatched. 
I mean, you could kick and scream all about you, but all you want. But the situation yeah. is the situation, you know. Van Dyke was a huge turning point for Liverpool. Van Dyke mm. took Liverpool at a different level, uh, and that's why Liverpool were where he's not not the sole reason. I'm not putting that as but but from the level that Liverpool were, from being like a, a really good tournament team to being a really good solid. Um, like I mean, the amount of games Van Dyke played in that that the Premier League winning season as well is is, is insane. And you know, he gets injured. Joe Gomez gets injured. Joe Matip's injured. You don't have mm. a fit centre back at the club. You know, it's it is what it is. Uh, you know, <laughs> you can't magic. You know, world class centre backs um, uh, out of thin air. And at the end of the day, and at the Premier League specifically, back lines win your titles. If you look at any sort of Premier League winning no, side, absolutely. they have been there. Bar Leicester, who had maybe an okay back line then, but but mm. that was a, that was a bit of a weird team. But if you look historically, all the way back to the start of the Premier League, the teams with the best back lines um, find success in, in the Premier League because of how success, uh, how intense that is. Um, I still think we can go on and have a good run in the Champions League. I know we'll find out in five minutes or so uh, how we're going to get on in that. <laughs> But yeah, I'm still. I was, I was, if we can get Champions League football and reset next season with, with a full fit um, squad, I don't see why Liverpool won't, won't be right up there um, challenging for that title. Mm. I think you'll sign mm. anyone, Simo. Do you think you'll get a couple of players? Like, you know, like, but where, where do you think? Uh, you I, I, wouldn't expect, I wouldn't expect any sort of massive incomings. Um, pending, uh, well, it's, it's difficult to say if Gini Van Alden, he's, he's still not looking as if he's going to re- renew his contract, frees up a bit of money potential signing for midfield. Great player, man. A great player. Uh, I know. I know. Just give him, give him the money. You know? <laughs> I mean, do you, I mean, the thing, <laughs> thing about it is, the thing about it is, Dan, I don't know if Jake agrees, but I mean, you've, you hear about the players that Simo's just listed out there that are out injured. You know, oh, yeah. Next season, they're all going to, hopefully next season, well, hopefully for Liverpool fans, they'll all be fit. I mean, do they really need to buy anyone, I, that's the question I would I, I would ask. I, I would say look, looking at, and the boys would be able to correct me on this because they watch them every week, but looking mm. from the outside in, in terms of a first 11, because you'd obviously need some backup players in the squad and stuff like that, as you've seen this season when players get injured. But if you had all your 11 first fit, I probably would replace Firmino with a better striker, although I do like him for what he brings in with Salah and Mane's goals. And I'd probably look to get a centre-half next to Van Dijk, who's better than Gomez and Matip, because Matip's made of glass and Gomez is, is still young and learning. And I actually think it's better of a fullback, to be honest with you. So I would probably go next with, with somebody like Canate from Leipzig, for example, Kula Bali, to partner Van Dijk. Maybe David Luiz. is a little bit too similar. David Luiz, <laughs> Mustafi. You know, Mustafi. I, I, would, I, I, would go with, I would go with that. You know? I definitely um, see not your much point. More, not much more than that. Mm. But Joe Gomez on these days is a fantastic prospect, and he really is, especially yeah. when he, and he, he does have that pace, that athleticism to play next to a player like Van Dijk. Um, I mean, yeah, you could, is there a better centre back out there than Joe Gomez? Yeah, you probably have to go pay a lot of money for them as well and pay them a, a good salary as well. In terms of replacing Bobby Firmino, Bobby Firmino on his day is absolutely superb. I mean, a lot of people think he's a centre forward, centre forwards are, are graded on the goals. That's that. I mean, everybody agrees with that. However, when you're a, when you're a Liverpool fan, you see and you watch them so much, you see exactly what Bobby does for the team. The, the amount of times he comes dropped tonight, deep. mate. Been dropped tonight. Just saw the team. Uh, of course, yeah, of course. In in uh, Jurgen Klopp op- probably opting for pace for the out ball uh, against that. The thing with that is for tonight, for tonight for me though is you know he's just come back from injury. He's played ninety minutes at the weekend. Mm-hmm. You know, it's probably a bit too soon to, to double start him. And. See with that the, the front four of um Manny, Salah, uh, and then in the middle, um Jot and Firmino. If you notice during the match, they were actually sort of switching between coming deep and a number ten position. Jot has yeah. a history of playing number ten as well, mm. slightly behind Ruben D- uh what's his name? <laughs> I was gonna say Ruben Diaz, but Ruben Neves sure. behind him. And then Yeah, uh, Neves, yeah. Yeah. And and then the Cracked his head up. He's Jimenez. Yeah, Jimenez. Played played slightly behind Jimenez. So they were actually kind of swip, uh, swapping out between who was going to come deep and who was going to go and forward and press. And it really, really suited Liverpool well and it allowed a lot of flexibility in how they were going to press Arsenal. Mm. Um, so I think that at some point tonight you may see minutes from Firmino, especially if it's not going our way, we would change to a 4 2 4. Um, but I think to deepen that bench, I mean, Shakiri has just been so um, unfortunate with injuries. Um, Origi doesn't really suit the possession-based football that, that, that Jurgen Klopp wants to play. I mean, when you see Div- Divo Origi on the pitch and he's out by the corner flag, you're thinking, what is he doing there? I mean, unless he's <laughs> unless he's between the sticks or just to the left-hand side of the edge of the box where he's, he's going to fire one in, he's, 
he's not much. He's not technical enough to come deep and and and, and play the ball into Man or Salah's path, and he's he's not fast enough to beat the last man in defence either. So, you know, I probably see Divock moving on and. Maybe maybe we reinforcing the front, but I don't think it will be your big spectacular sixty seventy million pound spend. I think mm. he may just he may just pick someone that might might suit the system. Someone generally that's going to be fast, technical, able to play possession based football. Let's get the last word from Jake and Simmer because I know they want to shoot off because uh, Liverpool playing Real Madrid. Yeah, I'm um, looking at our clock. Any yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> second now, we'll give them the last. Well, let's get let's get a quick score prediction from you both, then, and we'll talk about it next week. Uh, Jake, score prediction for tonight? For tonight, two uh, 0 Liverpool. Two 0 Liverpool. Two 0 Liverpool. Whew. Dan, two, that's 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 some two one. Uh, that's, two one. That's some confidence. Two one Liverpool. 2-1 Liverpool. Liverpool. I, think, I think you'll win, yeah. I think you'll be in. All right, well, I'm going to go against the grain then. I'll go... <laughs> uh, I'll go... Nil-nil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nil-nil. Nil-nil. Yeah. Nil-nil and uh, nil-nil. Sergio Ramos to get sent off. There you go. Oh, There's a Ben for you. Oh, isn't he? Oh, well, no, right, he's, okay. he's out injured. The odds will be good on that then. Yeah, the odds will be good on that then. Um... <laughs> Just go, sure, sure, do, do your research, Craig. Okay. Um, look, lads, I think this has been an absolutely brilliant evening. Um, I've really, really enjoyed just talking about football in general and, and the yep. things that surround uh, the, the great game. It's been, thank you very much. There's been a hundred of you watching us live this evening. Thank you very much indeed. Um, great numbers. We're going to be keeping this up uh, every two week, uh, every every week um, on a Tuesday. Don't forget, if you'd like to listen to these podcasts on audio, then I will be leaving a link in the description and I will also tweet out the link from the same old Arsenal podcast account where you can find Total Screamers podcasts on the audio. And of course, if you want to watch it, or if you want to watch the video back, then the video will be up on same old Arsenal podcast uh, YouTube channel. Dan, thank you very much, mate. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Simo. Jake, thank you very much. Thanks, mate. It's been a pleasure, boys. Cheers. Absolutely. And Simo, thank you very much, mate. Thank you very much, mate. I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed that. Absolutely. We'll see you next week. Um, and until we do, take care of yourselves and each other. Come on, Real Madrid.